but to the biggest doctor in New York City, the most famous chief of a department of a big cancer hospital. Okay, and you have surgery. If you had surgery with him, and this is page eight of our booklet, his success rate in you is 76% on average. That's the group of men with PSA 4 to 10, prostate cancer, true with radical prostatectomy at this big cancer hospital, 76%. Now you can say, wow, he told me he's going to get the whole prostate out. I thought I was going to be home free. Well, it doesn't work that way because they can spread the cancer when they operate. The cancer might have left the prostate. He may have uh, spread the cells when he cut through the prostate or actually may have cut through the cancer. So if you look at his data, 76% success rate. Our data is 90% for the same group. So for men with PSA 4 to 10, our results are 90% success. The chief of surgery doing radical is 76%. That's an 18% difference. Now, what's 18%? Well, there's more than 200,000 men a year with prostate cancer in America. 18% means 36,000 lives saved. So it's huge numbers. And if you go into Atlantic City and betting your house, would you bet on the casino that gives you 76% chance of winning or 90% chance of winning? Well, I do have your booklet. I'll have to dust it off now. Okay, well, turn to page 8. You'll see the chief of surgery at the big cancer hospital in New York versus us. I mean, again, hopefully you don't have any cancer, but I'm just telling you, if God forbid you do, there are big differences in the treatments. There's differences with quality of life, meaning sexual life and urinary life, and as well avoiding the radical surgery. So lots to think about. A friend of mine used to he had that uh, robotic surgery. Mm-hmm. He's fine, but he doesn't have any uh, sexual functions. Right. Well, we can talk about the robotic surgery. Actually, I have a, a, a letter here from the chief of a big cancer hospital who does robotic surgery. This is from the chief. And in the letter, if you come in to my office, I'll show it to you. But he said that, quote, while I prefer robotic approach, there is no convincing study demonstrating clear superiority over open or laparoscopic prostatectomy. So it's pretty odd that you'd recommend a treatment that's not better than other treatments. And actually, there's been a lot of reports in the literature about robotic surgery causing a lot of complications. Uh, As far as you said, the uh, sex life and urinary life, there was a study from Harvard Medical School, and actually, of men who had robotic surgery, only 13% had no problem with urine, meaning 87% had problem with urine after robotic surgery. And the sexual function, only 2% of men had robotic surgery had no problem with sex, meaning 98% of men were having trouble with erections adequate for intercourse. So, in fact, the complication rates of robotic surgery is pretty high. I think if men understood that there was a 98% chance that their sex life would be affected and an 87% chance their urinary life would be affected, uh, they most likely wouldn't do it. And the list of complications with robotic surgery, I mean, he's got a, this is the, the This is the man who does it, who recommends it. He made a list of the complications with robotic surgery for prostate cancer, and they were infection, bleeding, blood clot, pulmonary emboli, bowel injury, rectal injury, ureteral injury, cardiac or respiratory problems, penile shortening, urethral strictures, incontinence, infertility, and impotence. Mm. And, and, uh, I mean, there's a big thing going on right now that men are expressing. And actually, I've been involved in medicine for 40 years, and no one ever talked about this. But the fact when the prostate's removed, they have to sew back the tissues. And when they sew back the tissues, they're actually bringing the penis inside So penile shortening is something that also bothers a lot of men because they wake up from surgery and their penis is shorter and they don't understand why. And the answer is because it's been brought inside. Because the prostate's, let's say, about the size of a plum. So when you remove that, the tissues all have to come together. So there's a lot going on. And unfortunately, I believe most men don't really understand what's happening to them when they have the surgery. They think they're going to be home free. And it's far from that. Okay, well, that's very nice of you. I appreciate your time. All right, God bless you, and good luck. And stay in touch. Give me a call at our office number, which is that 212 Choices number, 212-246-4237 during the week, and we can talk more if you want.
All right. Thanks very kindly. All right. God bless you, and thank you. Bye-bye. We're going to uh, hear from our sponsor now, and we'll be back in just a few minutes. So here's Dr. Lederman. For cancer treatment, most prefer effective, non-invasive, well-tolerated outpatient therapy. At Radio Surgery New York, the Radio Surgery Pioneers, that's our goal, too. We're first in America, first in New York, first for you with body radio surgery. We hit your cancer from head to toe with no cutting, no bleeding. We have decades of experience with primary and metastatic large or small cancers. Cancer treatment with possibly a second chance for you, even if chemo, radiation, or surgery didn't work or isn't tolerated. Our goals are the best results and quality of life. Hi, I'm Dr. Gil Lederman. For a free booklet and DVD, call 212 Choices. 212 Choices for a fresh second opinion. Most insurances, Medicare, Medicaid accepted. We're super convenient. Broadway and 38th in Manhattan. Hyperthermia 2. To hit your cancer, call 212 Choices. 212 Choices for Radio Surgery New York. At Radio Surgery New York, the best prostate cancer treatment is custom tailored for you. Each man with prostate cancer is unique and seeks the best results based upon PSA, Gleason score, and stage. That's why custom tailored prostate cancer treatment is most logical. Not every man should get the same treatment. Custom prostate cancer treatment here is outpatient and takes as little as one hour. Our goals are your best results, avoiding radical surgery, maintaining your sexual and urinary function, and your life. Most insurances, Medicare, Medicaid accepted. Hi, I'm Dr. Gil Lederman. Call us at 212 Choices, 212 Choices for a fresh second opinion and a free booklet DVD. Conveniently located in Manhattan at 38th and Broadway. For your custom-tailored prostate cancer treatment, call 212 Choices. 212 Choices. Cherish your life with custom-tailored prostate cancer treatment at Radio Surgery New York. Welcome back to the Radio Surgery Hour. This is Rob Redstone here with Dr. Gil Lederman at the WABC Studios in the heart of New York City. We're just a few steps from the Radio Surgery New York Cancer Treatment Center on Broadway and 38th Street. Dr. Lederman, the leading cancer expert, treats prostate cancer non-invasively. He was the first in New York with fractionated brain radio surgery, and he's the first in America and in the Western Hemisphere with body radio surgery. Hey, Dr. Lederman, we're back. Hey, we're back. So the topic today is what to do what when you're a certain age. So some people say, hey, I'm 70, I'm 80, I'm 90, what should I do? And sometimes people bet against themselves, which wouldn't seem to be a very strategic move. We have a call. Let's take it, and then we'll uh, try to see what can answer this person's questions. It's Dr. Lederman. You're on the air. Hello. Good morning. Yeah, we can't hear you. You have to call us at 800-848-9222. Call us at 800 800- Eight four eight nine two two two, and be happy to take your call. So, what happens when people bet against themselves? Well, in walked yesterday a hundred-year-old woman. Now she didn't look to be a hundred. If I had to guess, I would have said she's seventy-five. But she's hundred years old. She told me her birth date. She was born in nineteen thirteen. I wow! I had to do the calculation. I said, wow, yeah, that's right, a hundred years old. So at 95, she's been in great health. At 95, she had bleeding in the urine. <clears throat> so her doctor looked inside the bladder. He did the right thing. He found a cancer. He recommended treatment. And she said, what the heck? I'm 95. I don't need to get treated. Well, was that the right decision? So now, over the last months, she's been bleeding in the urine. Blood, 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 blood in the urine. Blood, blood, blood. She's been bleeding in the urine. And for any one of you out there, if you have blood in the urine, it's a warning sign. Take it seriously. See your doctor. Come and see us. But it's a warning sign. Please get taken care of. So now the blood and the bleeding is relentless. And now she's up all night urinating. Well, why is she urinating? Well, she's probably urinating up all night because the cancer is now growing through the bladder wall. It's irritating the bladder. And because it's 
growing through the bladder wall. It's growing through blood vessels, which are now bleeding. So she has relentless bleeding and relentless pain. Her cancer, when it was biopsied, was found to be a high-grade transitional cell cancer. She doesn't have much in the way of history. She's been in great shape. Been in great shape. So, again, we wanted to stage her up. Could easily do that painlessly, effortlessly, one hour. We got her staged up, and guess what? Even though five years has passed, the cancer is still only in the bladder, only in the bladder. So she chose to come with us to have treatment for that cancer. She wants five treatments only in our hands, which were the first to do stereotactic body radio surgery in New York in America, in the Western Hemisphere. We've been doing it for years and treated thousands of patients. And we most likely can stop the bleeding and shrink the cancer, hopefully get her into remission. We staged her up. There is no cancer anywhere else in the body. So we'd like to see her go on and on and on and on. And she's very likely to do so. She's been in pretty good shape. She made it to 100, and I think she's going to make it more. So it's just a sign, don't bet against yourself. You don't know how long you're going to live. Let's do the right thing every step of the way, and then you're more likely to live longer and better, and she most likely is going to live longer and better, and most likely we're going to stop that bleeding and stop that cancer. So we wish her well. She's coming in next week to start the treatment. We've done all the planning work, and um, as I say, the treatment's non-invasive, each treatment's about 15 minutes. Patients come in, get a treatment, go home. And we had a very similar man, actually, I just finished treating, who's much younger, about 60 years old, with blood in the urine from a cancer of the prostate that's growing through the bladder. And we were able to stop his bleeding completely. So before, he used to come to us white as a sheet because he was losing so much blood. Now he looks like the rest of us, like he's come to life. And he's come to life because we were able to offer uh, successful treatment that's working uh, without cutting, without bleeding, without chemotherapy. So there are treatments for prostate cancer, bladder cancers, and actually most other cancers, no matter where they're localized. Interesting, right? Very interesting. We have a phone call, so let's take our phone call now, if that's okay. Good morning. Hi, this is Joe from New Jersey. Hi, Joe. Good morning. You're up bright and early. Yes, I am, and thank you for taking my call. Oh, no, uh, my pleasure. question was, I, I, um, I find that when I eat certain foods, like if I eat a, a fatty meal or uh, sweets for a certain maybe a day or two, I find that my urine flow seems to get really restricted. And uh, when I don't do that, and I eat more of a, a natural diet, because I, I exercise regularly, and, and um, I'm 62 years old, and I find that when I eat a, a more normal diet, I tend to have to urine, uh, urinate a lot less, and the flow seems a lot stronger. Mm -hmm. um, is this cause for alarm? or Well, what, there's what, probably it, some blockage or in, intermittent blockage or impedance of the urine. So the urine system, in the once the urine gets to the bladder, the urine's made in the kidney, it goes down the tubes, the ureters to the bladder, then it gets to the bladder. Now men, so half the population, have this prostate, and often the prostate may be enlarged. So at age 62, you're very likely to have an enlarged prostate. That could be blocking the urine intermittently. And yeah. not everyone has problems every day. So you may be equating it with the food, but actually, it's most likely just a blockage intermittently from the uh, prostate. There could be other causes. And yes, I would get checked out because you're symptomatic. And it's causing yeah. you uh, symptoms. And there may be an enlarged prostate. There may be something else uh, that's blocking it. So I, if it were me, I would get it checked out. Uh, yeah. Many men our age have this problem. You're not alone. It's very common. And you just want to make sure that it's not a cancer-related problem. And then, so there's basically yep. two uh, steps. Is it cancer-related or not? And then how to best treat the blockage. Right. Right. Does, 
does uh, diet um, affect the 